Uh, Pete, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have suggested that Ramaphosa is over being the president of South Africa. I think you've suggested it on CakeNet interviews, perhaps also on Worldview. When you say he's over, what do you mean? He's he wants over? to resign. He doesn't. He doesn't oh, want to be. Okay. And yeah. um, for example, I think Andre de Reiter has also said that Ramaphosa is more of a country club president than really a president, a manager. Country club manager, yeah. Yeah, country club. So, uh, what, uh, so shouldn't South Africans um, expect this guy to go before 2024 if he's not serious about this position? Or why is he still there if he's clearly not really interested in doing the job? It's because the alternative is too ghastly to contemplate. That's why South Africans say, well, hang around as long as you can. You're a country club manager. You're spineless. You're a weakling. You can't make important decisions. We don't trust you anymore. Uh, we think you put your party before the country. You've said so, and you're now showing us that you do. You are leading us down an uh, alley where uh, the Americans can scrap a goer, the Americans can install sanctions against us. Uh, you, you're doing things that can come at a massive price, but still the alternative is too ghastly to contemplate. Uh, it's not in, it, it's impossible for you to resolve the issues at ESCOM or to resolve to show leadership in uh, in in fighting unemployment and to, to to get some economic growth. There's nothing he can do. It's almost as if he is he, he's not even intelligent about his ability to do nothing. He's, he's clear about it. I can do nothing. He has this uh, eloquent speeches, but nobody trusts the content of his speeches anymore. But still, the alternative is too ghastly to contemplate. But I also think, yes, he has. Look, he has offered to, to resign. He wanted to resign just after the Parla Parla exposure. I still think he's waiting for that, uh, for the outcome of that decision with the National Prosecuting Authority. Um, I think he thinks it's 50 50. Things can go wrong there. Uh, and I think if it does go wrong there, he will say, uh, I will not go to court as a sitting president. I will resign first and then I'll face my fight. Um, and this is led by the National Prosecuting Authority? Um, the lawyer, well, uh, well, they, they have to make the decision. The, the Hawks are investigating it. The National Prosecuting Authority must decide whether there's enough evidence to prosecute. Them. So they make the final decision. Mm. But I mean... How many decisions have they made in the past five, six, seven years? I mean, I, I think there's not come a lot from the National Prosecuting Authority. They you take ages. They take ages. But in this case, uh, they can only make a decision once the investigation is on the table. The Hawks has not been done yet. So who do you blame here? Uh, I think what you uh, can point the finger at them for is the fact that, well, they, they just lost a very important Gupta case. Uh, the extradition of the Guptas is another uh, blemish on the uh, call it institutional character. So it, it, look, they're useless. They are pockets of excellence, but they by and large useless. They can't do what they should be doing, and uh, they they're in the same position. Shamila Bato is in the same position that uh, President uh, Ramaphosa. We had high hopes, we trusted them, and they let us down. Uh, if you can't, if you can't somehow reform the institution and uh, instill the type of capacity to do the job. You are there already for a number of years. In fact, she's not going for five years already. And still, we don't see any bloody progress. So I don't know. I, I, I can't see why we can't ask her to go. She's a bureaucrat that simply can't change, uh, turn around a ship that's of critical importance to turn around. We don't see them doing their jobs. I know the Hawks is a problem. I know national uh, sec uh, the, in the security is, is, is a problem. I, I know they have capacity problems. I know they have a, a shortage of money and they have a shortage of investigators. But that's your bloody job to manage all that and get the things done. Um, Pete, you, you say Ramaphosa is sticking on because the alternative is the ghastly to contemplate. I mean, no, a lot of people asking, they are asking him to stay on for the alternative mm. to Gaza to contemplate. I think he's just thinking about his own political survival, where he will survive Pala Pala. What are the likeliness that there will be a revolt from the Tulias, which infect the National Executive Council of the ANC, which eventually lead to him being asked to leave? But just remember, he's not in the death zone yet. Wait, wait, wait. He must be re elected first for the second term. And then. About two years into that term, then you enter the death zone. 
he must be re-elected as the president of, of South uh, Africa again. That yeah, usually, okay. then, then kick the dead zone kicks in. Yeah, let's hope we survive until then. Um, but I mean, the you, you said, okay, continuing on my point, a lot of people have said that, for example, Ronald Lamola would be Ramaphosa's choice or a new successor, a natural successor. Mm-hmm. What happened to that idea? I mean, it seems now we were stuck between Ramaphosa and Paul Machetile, but was it Ronald Lamola at a point a an alternative, a, a rational alternative? Well, apart from not always sounding very coherent, if you just try to visit the master's office in Pretoria, then you'll see... Uh, how good a manager he is. It's an absolute mess. The place has been closed almost. It doesn't function. If you look at the justice system in South Africa, some of the courts, lower courts, the high courts, some of those places are a filth, a mess. Um, Justice is not this uh, well-conditioned, well-oiled machine functioning perfectly because of good leadership from the minister. God and heaven forbids that he becomes the next president because South Africa uh, will just mirror what the Justice Department in some areas look like. So it's not going to change much. And he's, he's simply not a strong enough and a good and intelligent leader. There are other people that I think that you can recommend, but he's certainly not one. In fact, I think it'll be a, a serious, serious mistake to even suggest him for being a, a leader of a political president in the future or anything like that. So justice is very blind with Mr. Lamola. Would would you recommend? Would you recommend as uh, a much worthy successor to Ramaphosa? Oof, you know, it's, it reminds me of the Lions rugby team. The 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 the, the, the cupboard is just very very empty when it comes to trophies. Eh? There's prachtig in the ANC. Um, you, uh, I like this. Uh, um, the Premier of the Northern Cape. His name is passing me now. I'll get to Nana. Uh, I, I, I like him, but he's he's got such a low ranking. But yes, he, um, I, I I like talk with Diza, for instance. I think she's a he's a good individual. I'm I'm not sure she's presidential material, but I think she's she's, she's look the ANC. I, I don't even think about. It, I just want to get rid of the ANC. I don't want to think who, who will be the next president. There, it's, it's South Africa is 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 doomed. If we don't get rid of the ANC, their policies are doomed. Their ability to execute governance is doomed. They 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 are rotten to the core. They exist because uh, they uh, manage to infiltrate the state to the extent to which they can rely for their own financial and political survival on the state. Uh, you have to get this. It, it's like a leech. You have to get it out of the system. You you, you can't reform it. You can't elect newly. Ramaphosa is a good guy. But he, he cannot reform that institution. It's too thoroughly corrupted. It's too embedded in corruption, in opportunistic um, uh, um, functioning. It, it's just an institution that has really undermined itself to the extent that you cannot reform it. Now, Lady Pandor? Well, I, until recently, I thought she's, she's, she's one of the... A possible deputy president for Ramaphosa. You remember that at one stage Ramaphosa actually considered her to be his deputy president. But if you see how badly Dirko is being managed and uh, how badly the relationship between Russia and the ANC in South Africa has been managed, it's just horrendous. Uh, uh, the, her answer to everything that you say as a form of criticism uh, about uh, the approach to Russia is so what about the Palestinians? What about the Palestinians? We've been making that point for a very long time. We know it's a human rights atrocity. We know exactly what's going on there. We it's, it's we reject it. It's an abomination. We, it, it's not a, it's not a fair question to ask me. What about Palestine? When I say uh, Vladimir Putin has been abducting children, and uh, that's why the International Court of Justice uh, she asks you if it's a binary world. It, it, it's much more complicated than that. So. Yes, you know, I, I, I look. If if you think this uh, uh, Ramaphosa is a disappointment, what a disappointment she is in, in dealing with this. They're reckless, man. She's she's recklessly dealing with very complicating complicated issues. And um, Mr. Fixit, I, I I spoke to Cameron Dagmore at the State of the Nation, 
And he says a, a few, obviously it was a few months ago, and he says, Mr. Fixit is going to solve everything. And we've also spoken to Dr. J.J. Debane, and he says, just wait. Um, Fikile Malula. Yeah, Fikile Malula. He's just give him time, he's, he's going to solve everything. Look, look, I'm all for him returning to the two hours. I think he's wonderful there. I think he's the perfect person there. If he can do for the two hours what he's done for 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 for, for uh, logistics and for transport in South Africa, the ANC should be finished by six months. And that's exactly what you want. He's the perfect person to put in charge of an operation that you wish to undermine and eventually dissolve completely. I think he's brilliant there. They should have put him there a long time ago. So you think he has no noteworthy accomplishments to date? Nothing, nothing, nothing. He doesn't have the basic understanding of politics, of modern systems, of the economy. He's got no understanding of the role of political leadership or of political systems or of democracies or constitutions or bureaucracy or management, nothing. I've never ever in my entire life met somebody that's so unsuited for each and every role that he's ever fulfilled in his whole political career as for Kilian Balula. Where do you think this Mr. Fixer title comes from? He gave it to himself. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, 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 he gave it to himself on Twitter. I saw it when he did it. He can fix nothing. Just look at what the railways looked like after he fixed it. Mm. Logistics after he fixed it. Mm. Any case. Okay, interesting. Okay, so let's let's get to the alternatives, the opposition parties. The EFF, I think you've also said in the CakeNet interview, I watched a lot of CakeNet, um, that... <laughs> that um, you say that there's per perhaps some instability within the EFF um, in but terms of before an election, they call for salaries or not salaries, payments from their elected members to fund their election campaigns. And yeah, I mean, you, you can just keep on doing that before that becomes a problem. Yeah. Now, the local elections, they, 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 they raided the local councillors' salaries to, f to fund their campaign. That it, it, it's a very unpopular thing to do, especially because the salaries of the guys in uh, in, in the National Assembly wasn't raided to the same extent. You just have to visit the parking lot of the National Assembly to see what cars are being driven by the EFF. So the leadership, top leadership, don't they not subjected to that type of raid on their on their income? But I think the problems are elsewhere. Uh, uh, in uh, in twenty twenty one. Uh, they received 10.9 or 11% of the vote, I think. But that was when the turnout was 47%. We know that the ANC support stayed away in mass. Also, uh, DA support also didn't come out uh, as they usually do. But basically, the ANC supported, the people who normally vote ANC just stayed away. If the voting outcome turnout was 55% or 56 57%, there's a good chance of them dipping below 10%. And that is psychologically, it is a massive, massive indication of loss of support and loss of the, the, the narrative that they sell <clears throat> seems to have limited traction. They hear around about 10%, but now it is the point where they also need a very low turnout to really get that 10%. So if, and I expect the, the ANC to get 52% in the next election, because I think the turnout will be 56, 57, maybe 58, 59% even. If that happens, they will dip below 10%. And that will diminish their role as a possible coalition partner. It will diminish the impact of their narrative. Uh, and usually, when you start to lose uh, seats in the legislature, uh, the rumblings inside the party also drift to the top. But so, uh, that's when you will start seeing if there are uh, contradictions within the party in terms of personalities and power bases and stuff. It, it, it might just surface then. Yeah, all is not well. Look, at uh, Malema, is, it operates a bit like a dictator. Uh, you'll be very brave in the ANC, oh, in the EFF, if you speak ill of Julius. I think you'll be gone. Uh, and that's exactly the problem. Uh, as long as 
the going is good. Dictators will tolerate that. But wait till people lose their salaries and lose their positions and uh, they take some political strain. Then things might turn. So uh, he, he may reach the point where he starts to get back into the ANC because he feels the, the, the corrosion eating away at the bottom of his, of his party. And they also battle with money matters. So it's not all well inside the, the dilapidated house in Rome. <laughs> and do you blame policies or Mr. Malema or both? Who knows what their policies are? You know, they have uh, they have ad hoc policies. Depending on the on what happens, uh, they formulate something which is contrary to the constitution or which focus on white politics or DA politics. And lately, they also tend to focus a little bit on corruption in the ANC and stuff. You know, so they, they, it's opportunistic uh, policy that they formulate. Nobody really knows what the DA what what the EFF policies are. We we hear about it when there's a controversy. So it seems to me like you agree with, I don't know if you've seen Dr. Franz Cronier's latest poll, mm. um, where he says that the ANC will just get below uh, above 50% and the EFF will get about 8%. Mm. Do, you, do you agree with his poll? Do you think that's about mm. the correct way? That's the best Look, it all depends projection? on the outcome. All depends on the outcome, where, where they calculate the outcome. If they calculate at 65%, I think these figures are more or less right, yeah. That's the turnout. That's the turnout. I think it, that, that that sounds like... It, it, I wouldn't be surprised if the, the, the EFF goes be, below uh, 10%. Look, uh, Helen Zill, she said a lot of things which uh, make sense only in, uh, in a very small conversation. But she has said one thing which I always quote and which I think is a wise one, it, very applicable to South African politics, and that is... He said, you don't win an election on voting day. You win it on the registration day. And that's the problem that the EFF has. Uh, the youth don't register. They don't participate, but they don't register. Uh, and um, much of their support, or possible support base, is just not participating. So if they manage to spend all their money and more on the registration day, it is it is it is possible that they can do they can hang around at the, between 12 and 15% but the people that vote uh, EFF are not registered